Good afternoon uh, and a very warm welcome everybody to today's Stay Ahead of the Switchover Business Bites. Over the next 12 to 15 minutes, we will un uh, uncover what the analog switchover is all about, the potential impacts to you and your organizations, and I guess really importantly, some of the timescales that you need to be aware of. We will also discuss the next generation of business communications, telephony, conferencing and collaboration services, all of which will need to run over an internet connection or private network. Rather than what we use today, which is typically a copper based PSDN network. I'm Adam Munger and I'm the head of customer technology specialist for Wales and the Southwest. And I'm delighted this afternoon to be joined by Mike Bogatz, who is one of our senior migration specialists. So at the moment, landline calls, as well as many network services, they typically use, um, I guess, analog networks and PSDN services provided by OpenReach. And OpenReach will be switching this network off in 2025. There is a lot to consider um, for you and your, and your organizations, but by making early decisions and actually some early changes ahead of 2025, by the time we reach 2025, this will become business as usual for you. I have one slide which hopefully illustrates the size of this challenge. So we can see here at a UK level, there is over 400 communication providers that must do something. This equates to 16 million lines that will be impacted. As of December 2020, so only a few months ago, there were still 14 and a half million lines that had to migrate or still need to migrate. So if I bring this down back to our region, Wales and the Southwest, on average, we are seeing round about 341 impacted lines per customer. And so when I look at the challenge for 2025, this actually equates to roughly 360 lines must start to migrate every week. That's quite a big challenge. However, please don't panic, there is still plenty of time. And whilst this does sound like an inconvenience, this really does provide an opportunity to step away from today's analog services and migrate to much more flexible, agile and feature rich services. As we're limited on time today, uh, we'll follow up with any additional questions you may have after the event. So I'm going to invite Mike into the discussion and ask Mike to, concern, to, to discuss and consider some of the common questions that we are hearing and seeing today about the move to all IP. Welcome, Mike. Good morning, Adam, and uh, good morning to all of our attendees. So first question, Mike. What would you say the benefits are for switching over sooner rather than later and leaving it closer to 2025? Well, I think um, we would like to be clear that we're not forcing customers to migrate at this point. This is a decision that customers need to be comfortable making and BT is here to support them now on current services and technology and every step of the way to migration to IP by 2025. Those customers who choose to switch now will of course see benefits sooner rather than later. Voice over IP solutions allow more flexibility to work location independently. They may be more cost effective for the customer or allow them to do business in new ways. We also expect customers to benefit from consolidating to single connectivity for multiple services rather than having separate voice and data lines. Another thing to think about is that any customer with an on-site switch or PABX probably pays for maintenance, software, or engineering support, which all goes away if a cloud-based service is chosen. Thank you, Mike. Next question then, uh, we get this one quite a lot. Uh, will the switch over only benefit large businesses? No, um, all, all business, businesses, uh, small, medium, or large can benefit. Uh, in particular, smaller organizations will enjoy the same level of service and capability that was previously only available to organizations that invested significantly in IT. 
Hosted or cloud-based solutions give these benefits on a per user basis and cost. At the same time, the overhead of management is reduced significantly in an on-demand or as a service model. Thank you. Interesting one here. Will customers need broadband for the new telephony services to work? And what about people who live in areas where both broadband and mobility services are somewhat, um, uh, somewhat poor in service? Well, yes, um, customers will need a data service for IP voice to work. Um, this could be broadband or it could be another network access product, whatever is available, whether that's fixed or mobile. Um, it's worth remembering that IP voice does only require a small amount of bandwidth with which to work. Um, with regards to uh, the broadband and mobile um, availability, um, both OpenReach and EE are expanding network availability all the time. Um, this month, OpenReach announced their new target to pass 25 million premises by 2026, and that's an increase on the previous 20 million target. Um, and they're currently building uh, FTTP, that's fiber to the premises connectivity, at the rate of roughly 43,000 premises per week. Well, wow, that's uh, quite quite an expansion, uh, rate of expansion there. Um, so I know this is quite dear to a lot of people's hearts. Um, so where a customer has a service that supports, or equipment, sorry, that supports services that run 24 by seven, what advice, Mike, can you provide on how customers should go about you know, approaching and replacing this equipment? And you know, do they have to do all of this by a set date? Well, we recognize that um, customers may need to make changes to their equipment uh, at the same time as the line is switched over. Um, so when the time comes, um, our account managers, our specialists, our migration program team, um, they will work closely with our customers to build a plan uh, to switch sites over in their own time. Um, we'll give clear notification about when any changes are happening. Um, as part of that plan, you might want to do a trial site um, rather than going into something as a big bang. Um, it's worthwhile remembering that if you have services with other communications providers, uh, then you will need to speak to them about their plans. Okay, some good words there. Thank you, Mike. Um, now, obviously, over uh, the, the years that have gone by, there's um, a lot of copper in the ground. And um, so can this existing copper network still be used to provide power, even though it's not being used, say, for providing voice in, in the future, given that this wiring will still exist in the ground, overhead, etc.? Yeah, so um, the answer to that question is no. Um, even though the copper network may still be partly used to deliver services, the products that run over it will no longer provide a power supply. Um, also, um, to bear in mind is the parts of the network that are purely fiber um, can't support power transmission anyway. Um, so there is no voltage being supplied as part of the service anymore. Um, that means customers do need to take into account um, this in their planning for migration, as well as thinking about resilience. Uh, without a separate power supply or battery backup, IP phones won't work if there is a power cut. So that's something that's very important to think about. Thank you for that, Mike. Uh, that was actually the last question that I have been given. Um, so thank you again, lots to think about there, Mike. Um, I guess before I bring this session to a close, um, um, Mike, is there any, and you and I talk about this a lot, you know, is there anything, if you could summarize everything we've just covered today in three simple steps, what would they look like? Yeah, I think there's, um, there's a slide that's about to appear. Um, and I, I think the first point is around review, reviewing what you have and how it's used, um, what lines and services you have, how you use them, where they are, and what devices are connected to those lines. 
Um, when you've got a good understanding of that, then you can move on to the second part, which is around choosing the technology um, that best suits what you need to do going forward. Um, and I think here what we're talking about is how do you want to work in the future? Um, this is an opportunity to transform, and many of our customers are looking at it as, as, as that opportunity, that transformational aspect. Um, many customers want to change to an agile or location independent way of working. Um, and this last year has absolutely shown that we're in a new age of home working and mobility. Excellent. Finally, I think that, sorry, um, I was just gonna say, finally, I think um, being ready for anything is about being ready for challenges and also being ready to challenge and change. Um, as ever, talk to your BT team for help and advice on BT services, but don't forget to speak to suppliers and service providers of equipment connected to your BT lines. Excellent, thank you, Mike. Three, I think simple, but very important steps there, which I 100% agree with. Um, Please remember, uh, I, know, I know that we've only sort of covered a few uh, questions and answers in this session, but if you've got any uh, additional questions, please submit those through the chat and we will follow up um, after this session. So I'd like to just thank everyone for listening and we hope that this has inspired you to keep moving your business forward. Um, and in terms of any, uh, um, any follow ups uh, that you would like, um, I will post a couple of email addresses in the um, in the website, along with the responses to any questions that we get. So please feel free to reach out through those email addresses. And I'd just like to thank you again for joining and wish you a great rest of the day.